Hey guys, this is Jacob from Venture Addicts, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you five effects on how to replicate song endings in Adobe Premiere Pro. For example, when I wanna make videos for Instagram, I only have a minute to show off my work, but most songs are three to four minutes long, so I have to go in there and have to cut or add effects to the audio because I want it to fade in and fade out, you know, nice and repetitive so it can loop better and more seamless. Today, we're gonna to use a song from Artlist.io, Call On Me, by Kickly. I grabbed the first 56 seconds of the song to where it ends on the last beat of this bar. I'd also recommend turning on loop. That way, you can get an idea on how it will sound on Instagram or any platform that loops videos. So, if you click at the end, it'll loop right back in the beginning. So, for effect number one, we're gonna do the simple fade out. Under your effect panel, type in constant power, simply drag it at the end of your audio track, and it'll simply fade out. You can double click the effect and set the duration to your liking. I'll do one second. So let's listen. So honestly, that didn't sound too bad. Sometimes being generic, nice and simple, is the best way to go. But I'll show you a few more tricks, get a little deeper in there. For number two, we're gonna keyframe a low pass filter. A low pass filter is a filter that passes signals with a frequency lower than a certain cutoff frequency. Under effects, type in low pass filter and drag it onto your track. Open the effect controls. If you let the song play, you can drag the low pass cutoff back and forth and get a better understanding of what the effect does. So when I do this effect, I like to start at the last beat and keyframe the effect for about a second. Drag your playhead to the beginning of the last beat, go to your effect controls, make sure the cutoff is all the way to the right, and click the stopwatch button. On your timeline, hold down shift and click the right arrow key five times to move 25 frames. Back in the effect controls, drag the cutoff to 2000, and you can see the key appear on the right. Now let's listen. So that one's just as simple, just as basic. That one really varies song by song, but for a while it was one of my personal favorites. You can go back to some of our older videos and you can hear it. Um, you definitely don't want to use it on every song, but a cool idea is actually to maybe do that and a fade out or, you know, there's all kinds of ways for it to be one of many effects to get the perfect sound that you want. For number three, we're going to use an effect I use almost every time, reverb. Reverberation, or reverb, is created when a sound or signal is reflected, causing a large number of reflections to build up and then decay. On a timeline, go to the last beat of the song, and I'm actually going to start at the last clap of this beat. Now this will vary song by song, whether it's the actual last beat of the song or there's a few other little snares or claps going on. Try to grab that last little, that little spike in your audio and that's what you want to put a reverb effect on. So in my case, I got this clap that comes right after the beat. Press C to bring up the razor tool and I'm going to cut it right before this last spike in the beat. Click V to go back to your cursor and click on the last piece. Right click, nest, and hit OK. Double click on your new nested clip and it'll open up in a nested sequence. You may appear in the middle of the timeline. Just drag it all the way back to the left until you find your piece. Now, whatever I do to this clip in the nested sequence will be brought over to the original timeline. First, we'll create our own fade out by keyframing the decibels. With your playhead on the first frame, go up to your effect controls and click the stopwatch by level. If it's already highlighted, click it off and click it on again, and you'll see the keyframe appear on the right. Go to the end of your timeline and then type in just some very large negative value, and it'll come out as negative infinity. Now, drag out the rest of your audio for about a few seconds. Go back to the original sequence, and now you're allowed to drag the nested sequence out longer, leaving room for the reverb effect we're about to apply. At this point, if you play it back, it should just sound like a fade out, but you're gonna have all this extra room where we can put on the reverb effect, and it's just gonna sound a lot better and a lot more seamless. So, in the effects panel, type in Reverb, grab Studio Reverb, and drag it onto your clip. Go up to the effect and click Edit. 
stretch out the window, and here you'll have a whole list of settings to play with. You can see the presets are named after types of environments that help you understand how the audio may decay. I'll make this easy, we'll keep it on default, and just drag the wetness to 100 and we should be alright. Now when you play it back, you can hear it fade even longer and smoother. I love this effect, it's great. It, you can use it on pretty much any beat and drag out any beat or sound. This wasn't the best song to use, but when you mix it with other sound effects, it sounds amazing. And that brings us to number four. Now for number four, we're gonna build on top of this effect with sound effects. My favorite effects are risers and downers, which are typically a synthesized in and out effect, like in scary and intense movies. I linked a video in a description of a YouTube video I found where the guy lets you download like 20 of these. They're amazing, high quality. Check them out and you can use them in your own video. It'll make all your stuff way more impactful, way more amazing. By the way, if you're working with a lot of audio right now and you need another track, right click on the gray area over here and select add track. So I'm gonna use this one track I downloaded from the folder in the YouTube video. This one seems simple enough. Generic film riser. Now all I have to do is match the climax of that sound effect with the cut of the track. So I'll drag it in here. And I'm just gonna put that spike right on there. And that's it, let's see what we got. And there you go, simple as that. I also use reverb claps, snaps, uh, reverse cymbals, kind of like in and out. There's a whole library of random sound effects on YouTube, and that's what I actually use to find all these random sounds. And lastly, number five, the cut. So most of the times I'm able to pull this off on almost any song I find, because if you think about it, you know, every song has an intro, a build, a drop, kind of has like the slowdown part, then it builds up has another drop, and then it has like a slow ending. And if you're getting a lot of your music from places like Majestic Casual or Mr. Suicide Sheep, you know, they all kind of have this same formula they follow. And it's just like four beats of this, four beats of that, four beats of this. And it's just like a re repetitive whatever. So a lot of times I actually find myself grabbing the, uh, the last four beats of the outro and having the pretty easy ability to just kind of put it at the end of another four beats. And that's what we're gonna do in this song. So starting with the original clip I had at the first 56 seconds, I'm gonna open the original file. Like you can even see it. It's like slow, fade up, it drops, slow part, same drop, then it slows down, a third drop, and then a nice slow ending. So it's very, very similar, very formula kind of style. Um, so we listen to the end here. So it already has like a nice fade out for me. So instead of doing all these cool effects to make it work, I can just snag their outro they already have and then find a way to just kind of paste it on the end of somewhere in the middle of the song. So I think I'm gonna grab it right here on the last clap. Something like that, let's see. All right, I'll just drag it on here and let's see what we got. It was a little fast. And you can like hear, what was that delayed? I can't tell, let's do one frame. Boom, just like that, so easy. I didn't even have to use a, an effect. There it is. So I guess honestly, that's probably what I do the most because so many songs just, they're so easy to paste together like that. Sometimes I got to use constant gain and 
uh, you know, maybe put them together, glue them together. So there's five examples of replicating sound settings in Adobe Premiere Pro. So get that perfect fade out, that perfect reverb, whichever one you prefer, then go on YouTube and search all kinds of different sound effects. If you, you can stack them, you know, I, I have videos where I use six different sound effects with the reverb and it's just like this powerful, like impactful way to just end a song. Or even, uh, you, you, you know, you could beef up your drops, you know, there's all kinds of ways to do it. And play with those different and reverb settings to different presets. There's all kinds of crazy ones, especially if you go in Adobe Audition. I'd recommend trying Adobe Audition. There's so many effects in there and so many one click, two click little edits you can do in five seconds, super easy. Look up those on YouTube as well. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, like and comment below. And if you're having trouble with any of these tips, hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. Let me know, I'll walk you right through it. Subscribe for more tutorials in the future and we'll see you next time.